free golden eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the second part of the P47D gameplay. Now, if you haven't watched first part yet, I'll put a link in the description below and on the screen right now so you can watch that. It's a very good video. But people had some questions, and good questions at that, and all is going to be answered in this video. Here's the problem. The match that I showed you in the first part was an ideal match. I climbed, my team climbed, the enemy team didn't climb too much, the enemy aircraft were not the most overpowered, and it was just one of those matches that really doesn't happen too often, although it should. The match you're showing right, I'm showing you right now is, well, is kind of the complete opposite story. Now, here's a couple of things you have to know. I've updated myself here. I've joined up with a squad mate in a P-51. So I'm a full battle running above, and there's even going to be some Yak-9Ps and uh, some LA-9s in this matchmaker, just so to make things a little bit harder. Now, the reason why this match was a catastrophe wasn't because I was up -tiered. No, it was because by the time that me, my squad mate, and one of the teammate in an F-82 had reached combat altitude, our entire team was wiped clean. Seven minutes into the match, which was the time we took uh, to climb up to 7,000 meters, our team was wiped to the ground. Nothing left of it. Now, fair enough, they did take a couple of the Russian players with them, and so what was left was a couple of Russian planes scattered here and there. But they're flying a treetop level. And here's the biggest pain for a lot of you, and, and most people have pointed this out. When you go and climb to 7,000 meters, that doesn't mean that the enemy yaks and enemy Lavochkins are going to be waiting for you at 6,000 meters for you to club them. No, they're going to be flying at treetop level. So if you want to engage them, you're going to have to dive down there. So unfortunately, that's exactly what we have to do. We have to throw away those seven minutes of the match climbing and just dive down back to 1,000 meters and engage these players on their own terms, basically, because Lavochkins, yaks, they perform best at low altitude. So I've chosen my target, LA9, I'm diving in, I'm redlining heavily here, 870kph, set him a fire, and uh, zoom straight out of the area. At this point, I was, I was still having hopes. I was hoping that we could pull this match. Uh, my squad mate, he's swooped in, he's taken out the uh, Yak 9P, I've taken out the LA9. And at this point, we've spotted a Fock Wolf, and to my right, there's going to be a Yak 3P emerging shortly. It's looking decent. We might be able to pull this one. So I put some smoke on. I'm thinking, you know what? If I can make the Focke Wolf turn, we might be able to take him down together. Fire quick burst from uh, far away. Nothing serious. Couple of hits, and uh, he does a smart thing. He just simply zooms straight away. We're not going to catch him. That plane is too fast for us, and we've already dropped the altitude, and we've now dropped the speed. All that climbing, all those seven minutes of climbing, have now been wasted. Three turns. It's all over. And this is one of the reasons why people don't climb. It's not beneficial. You throw away seven minutes to then get one kill and then get wiped by the enemy team. And I've discussed this in the last video, and people came up with a couple of solutions, you know, giving RP for lines for people who climb. The problem is that then everybody would climb. It's hard to create a system that would be balanced, that would give those players who deserve the RP and lines just that. If you ask me, the solution is going to take more time to actually come up with, and it's going to be a lot more complicated than one might think. For example, here's a situation. I'm facing against a Yak-3. He was above me, he's got more speed, he's got a better plane, and I'm at his altitude, at low altitude. This is where the Yaks is going to excel. I'm a dead man. So what I have to do here is I have to somehow try to drain a Yak off his energy. A near impossible thing to do. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping my plane in a horizontal turn. Strictly a horizontal turn. I do a split S here to get some speed back, and I'm trying to push the Yak into what I'm hoping would be a loop for him, where he would start losing that energy as soon as possible. I didn't know what I was doing. You see, there's no set of rules, no, no pattern that I could repeat or tell you that you should repeat in order to make such a maneuver work. Somehow, the Yak managed to drain enough energy in that last loop, I was able to get one shot, and that left wing aileron damage was enough to force him to crash into the ground. And here's the thing. A maneuver like that, a kill like that, against an aircraft like that, in that type of situation, is something that should award more RP. Here's the issue. RP is rewarded to damage. 
not to the maneuvers and the complication that led to that damage. And this is what the problem is. You see, you can't create a system or a, an algorithm that would say, okay, so you've been fighting for the past two minutes. You know, you, you can't somehow get the information from the game unless you have a referee, unless there's actually somebody, a physical person, watching the match and saying, okay, you had to put your aircraft into a very difficult dogfight, you deserve more RP. And so here we were, the last men standing against two enemy aircraft, and we were hoping that somehow we could pull this match and make it into a win. And this is where I made my biggest mistake. I was going up against a Yak-3P, and in the fashion of the Yak-3P, he was putting myself into a huge stall. I decided to output all of the possible ammunition I could, got some hits into him, nothing serious enough. He stalled me out, and he now has me in a perfect position. I am a dead man. I've done a mistake, I shouldn't have uh, followed him into that dive, and uh, right here, I tried to ditch out that one last turn, but uh, it wasn't enough. Right wing, clean off. I gotta give some credit to the uh, Yak-3P pilot, he was the uh, best player on that team. Uh, flew his plane perfectly, no mistakes made. Um, he did actually get shot down a little bit later by the F-82, but uh, when the um, the Focke 490 D-9 returned back from the airfield, um, the F-82 was low, low in altitude. In the meantime, the P-51's uh, engine was dying out, there's nothing they, they could have done. They tried their best, and uh, the game just uh, didn't go away. But I wasn't going to give up that easily, so I decided to do one last test for this plane. And here it is. Now this is the ultimate challenge for the P-47. Not just am I about to engage in the worst possible situation for the P-47. Low altitude turn fighting, I'm about to do that fighting against the Yak-3Ps. This should this should be a GG for the Yak 3s. Just look at the enemy team, they're everywhere. So, I managed to stall at the Yak 3P that was below me, and this should be an easy job. No problem for the 50 cals, they converge, and boom, that pilot was not having a fun day. But neither was mine, because as I check my six, there's about three Yaks behind me, and one is already unloading the shells. Now, unfortunately for him, he didn't actually dive any faster than I was diving initially. So, as I pull after him, I was able to get a quick burst in, and boom, he's a fire. Yeah, that fire is going to go out. But nonetheless, what we managed to do is I've managed to actually pull down about four aircraft to a lower altitude, and now my team is coming in to save the day. And this is great. One of them is going to engage the Act 3 I just set a fire, the other one that's now on my 6 should soon divert because there's too many players for him to uh, handle the heat. And there he goes. Great time for me, split S, and uh, let's start engaging them. Unfortunately, there's nothing for me to engage. I mean, the Act 3 that I set a fire has just been shot down. The second one that I'm now trying to engage uh, is being pilot sniped by the Typhoon in front of me. Nothing, nowhere for me to attack. The Russian team just perished. They ceased to exist. Well, except for that giant spaceship that I can see to my right. It probably is a PE-8, but right now I don't want to engage with him. There is something a little bit more important and a little bit more dangerous coming and closing straight in on me. It's a Lavochkin. Now, the LA-5 that was behind me here is closing in fast, so I have to come up with something. I can try to dive him, but I'm feeling a little bit more playful than that. This is, after all, the jug. Unless I get pilot sniped, or he managed to make a couple of holes in my left wing, I should be generally fine. So wait for him to come nice and close. I'm feeling comfortable. So I start off with a couple of negative G rolls. I'm trying to slow my plane down just enough for him to come in at a mediocrely high speed. Put the plane to left-hand turn, and immediately go up. Roll, he does put some hits into me, but nothing too serious. I'm now in a position where I can wait for him to try to overshoot. And he does just that, but he does it at the point where my plane was, well, trying to turn left. So I now don't have an ideal position to attack him. I do lay off a couple of quick bursts here. I'm hoping I can get some hits in. I, I do, but it's not enough. From that distance, the convergence of mine, which is set to 300, is just not going to be effective. I was debating about diving down there, but to be honest, those two yaks, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, they're dead. They're completely wiped out at this point. So, no point. Let's chase the LA-5 down and uh, get ourselves a kill. Now, this guy wasn't a bad plan. He's about to give me the run for the money. Now, he's hiding in the clouds. Now, this is good and bad. It's, it's good because I'm going to have a hard time trying to shoot him down, but it's also bad for him because at the same time, he can't really see anything. As long as I stay below the cloud limit, I can actually see him, or at least I can see that dot deep in the cloud. But when you're in the cloud, you can't see anything, just the cloud. 
So he disappears for a split second and I spot him immediately because he's still within that kilometer of a distance. And here's the thing, the LA5 didn't bother climbing, he wants to a turn fight. Now, in the turn fight, he's probably actually going to outdo me, but I'm still on his 6, and as long as I can keep this position going, he's not going to be a happy pilot. Now, he's completely extending me here, so I want to actually slow down the plane just enough to get that shot in, and right here, big mistake. What happened? Well, what he did was he tried to go into a rolling scissors, and it would have worked for him if he didn't do it so predictably. Rolling scissors are a great thing to start. The issue about rolling scissors is really starting them, initiating them, is something that requires you to put your aircraft in front of the enemy's guns for just a split second. And what he could have done is when he went to split S, he could have rolled his plane over by about 90 degrees. And what that would have done is given me a much harder shot. I probably still could have shot him and killed him, but it would have made my job a lot harder. Now, all that's left is a cleanup job. A Yak-3 left in front of me, and I've got all the speed that I might need. He's trying to run for the base. Really? Mate, you're not going anywhere. Fire off early, get some hits in. I'm just waiting for him here. He's making some crazy maneuvers. All I have to wait for is the guns to converge, and boom. Fireball. So I go back up into a climb, and I'm going to spot him. If that fire goes out, I can uh, go back and re-engage him, but just to be sure, I'm going to go back down and I finish him off, and... Just as I start to dive, some of my friendly start coming in, and there go the tracers. Now, I've got no intentions of actually getting this thing kill stilled. I've come along enough, so might as well finish him off, and there we go, third kill. So at this point, that's the last remaining enemy player, except there's still something left. A spaceship. And I can only guess what that spaceship is going to be. It's that PE-8 from the beginning of the match. So, let's go find him. And after a couple of minutes of searching, I managed to find the uh, mothership just uh, a little bit away from the enemy base. So, 2,000 shells left. This shouldn't be a hard job. I'm not even going to bother. I'm trying to aim for the pilot here. I actually didn't converge completely there. I was aiming way too ahead from the enemy plane, and all those shells uh, fell too far off. But uh, that engine fire there is uh, enough to make the plane go kaboom in just a couple of seconds. And there goes the mothership. So, a GG, and a GG to a match that I was expecting to be a colossal failure. The P-47 is an aircraft that ideally should be played at a high altitude. You should climb at the beginning of the match, take about 5-7 to seven minutes to get to that good 5-7k to seven K altitude, and then work your way down. But in the off chance that you can't do that, you find yourself in a low altitude fight, I think this shows you that you can still be competitive, even against the AC-3Ps, on their own turf. As long, of course, as you have a little bit of luck and a rough idea of how you should counter them. Alright, so first place on the team yet again. Four kills, 81,000 lines, and uh, only 3,000 RP, but that's because that's not going anywhere since the plane is already spaded. So, yeah, I think that's enough P47 gameplay for one year. Let me know what you think about this plane. Let me know what you could uh, suggest for improvement of uh, RP and line system for those people who actually try hard in the game. And uh, let me know which aircraft I should fly next. But until next time, take care and uh, safe flying. Source of power. It feels like there's just thousands of people behind me just pushing me forward to the top of this mountain of success. And it's an incredible feeling. So... Yeah, that's one of the biggest things that motivate me, and I don't think I'm alone in this. If you ask me, there are three things in life that motivate people. Number one, of course, is money. I mean, look, if I gave you a hundred bucks right now into your hand and told you to do something, you'd probably...